So that's enough for me. And I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm sure Ben will very quickly mute me now. And uh, Brendan and, and Neve are going to have a little bit of a chat online about uh, her, her part of the work uh, in, in this uh, next bit. So over to you guys, uh, Brendan and Neve. If you're not muted, just, or if you are muted, unmute yourself and away you go. Okay, I uh, can I just I just wanted to uh, because Rosemary is not uh, taking part in the interview. I just have a little statement here, which I'd like to read out from her before and even myself have a chat. Is that okay, Neve? Yeah, perfect. So uh, I have uh, wait now if I get my glasses on. So Rose says I have always been creative in one way or another. Twenty three years ago, we moved to Ireland, and mostly my life revolved around family care until two thousand and fourteen, when I was on a course and someone suggested I go to art college. And I had a light bulb moment and found myself saying, yes, it's about time I did exactly that. I was open-minded with no expectations and looking forward to, a personal, to the, the personal challenges of which there were many as a mature student re-entering education after such a long time. I really enjoyed the way the experience was a creative conduit for self-development. And this very much so fed into my work and my studio practice. Consequently, I resolved to trust my own creative process more and more and enjoy the process of instinctive play. During my degree year, I discovered through working on a personal project inspired by my great grandparents that embroidery was my creative choice of medium. And I loved the way it had strong links to community from that era. And though I had learned the skill as a child, I could now reinterpret it in a more contemporary way. I was and still am inspired by nature and the natural world, and particularly light, texture and colour, which I take inspiration from daily. During the lockdown of this year, I began to explore new ways of, express, of expression, looking at interpreting 2D geometry in 3D form. Moving forward, my aim is to explore freestanding possibilities with this medium. My studio practice involves initially designing two dimensional blueprints for what will become three dimensional elements and how they fit together, much in the same, same way a sculptor designs. I machine embroider onto a water soluble fabric, which I dissolve and mold each piece onto a form to hold the shape while drying. The pieces are mounted, mounted onto a variety of supports like Perspex, which has an interplay of light through each piece, thereby adding an abstract element to the overall composition. This body of work is a combination of pieces that are extra abstracted realism, as in they, are, they reinvent ways of observing realistic objects and others that are more an emotional dialogue of personal memories relating to family connection and musical interpretation. So that's her statement. And I don't know if you can see the images there, if there are any images up, but um, uh, when you go and look at her work, it's very, uh, uh, you can see that straight away, the, the, the connection with um, musical interpretation and the fact that quite often her, her titles are in, in Italian. That's a, an, an emotional connection she makes with her family, of, of which is somewhat Italian abstract, abstract uh, not abstraction, but extract. So um, I don't think that, uh, there's any point in me saying much more, really. Um, we'll just get on with the interview with Neve. So uh, if you have any questions for Rosemary, um, you can post them down below in the chat box, and I'm sure she'll, uh, she'll either answer them straight off or she'll get back to you later. Uh, and I'm sure you'll also have a possibility, if you want, uh, later on to, to, uh, to interact or ask questions and have answers on Facebook and other, other places where we post this video later on. Okay, so Neve, um, your your state your I was reading your statement earlier on, and um, uh, if you just for for people who are, who are not really familiar with you, don't know you maybe that well, uh, maybe you just kind of explain uh, talk a little bit about your background uh, before we get sure. into this body of work. Yeah, sure. Well, I've kind of I've kind of. Uh come the long way to art, not unlike Rosemary. And incidentally, Rosemary, congratulations, gorgeous body of work. I'd love to have seen that in the flesh. Hopefully another time, girl. Um, 
Uh, thanks for having me, everybody. Yeah, so I'm a, what I like to refer to as a late life artist. I had wanted to be an artist from the time I was four when I realised that my brother could draw the kitchen cooker better than I could and it was actually a way of expressing yourself. <laughs> and I remember that so completely. Um, and I'd spent much of my schooling trying to kind of direct myself towards an arts education, but unfortunately I had very bad illness in my late teens and into my twenties. And I kind of put it on the back burner and it's only really about 15 years ago, seven, no, 17 years ago, I started dabbling again as a hobby and then um the Jetsons when we were kids like we are in this this is it I'm only sure to have a rocket outside the door you know mm. we're living remotely we're separated from everybody and yet technology is somehow keeping us together and allowing us to share so thanks for that but that's kind of the long-winded that's the long-winded me <laughs> right right so we, we kind of we're familiar we're familiar with your work generally as a um uh, 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 an acoustic painter and a, and a printmaker. Yeah. You usually use uh, quite often a combination of the two in your work. And would you say that this work is is very similar on a similar vein, or is there, is there some difference there? I would imagine. Well, I suppose uh, I had a big body work, and I actually had the pleasure of showing it at Solace in 2017, which was hidden out loud, and that was very much me processing my journey through illness and the last couple of years I've been quite well thankfully and I just felt wax for me has always had this idea of something suspended within um you know a timeless quality there's almost a kind of because wax is a natural preservative I was almost preserving ideas and preserving emotions and preserving feelings within the encaustic and for some reason this year I can't get into the wax I just whatever it is it's not doing it for me and I thought well maybe lockdown is an opportunity to go back to a painting practice and just see where it brings me now I have to say my process is very much the same as in it is very heavy mark making and I like to work in layers and I think that comes through with my own you know my own education in encaustic you know that idea of layers but I think we all have layers and there's something in that that I always want to try and and project you know um but yeah it is it's I suppose I see it as a different body of work entirely is a completely new kind of launch for me, you know, um, and yes. I find I feel freer in this. I'm also working a lot larger, which I saw Rosemary Langtree's there. Rosemary's a good old pal of mine and we've done a lot together in Caustic over the years. Um, working large in Caustic is difficult. And I seem to have this sense of freedom and a great deal more just, I feel expressed, more expressive somehow in this current yes. body of work, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that's very evident. I think that's very evident in this body of work. For me, it's very, because I'm an abstract painter myself, and it, yeah. it's, it's really, it's very reminiscent of uh, of that period in art history called abstract expressionism, you know, in the 40s and the 50s, when, when they were on the verge of, like, stepping into a completely new era that was kind of undefined before in history. Um, so it's very much about taking steps into a, wherever man might be, you know, but it represents the man or represents the, the survivor or represents the victim. There's always something in that commentary thing for me to put a being in one of my pieces. And right. I, I don't right. know if I can describe it any better than that. Yeah, yes. it's yeah. It's almost like archetypal then in a way, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I suppose, look, at the end of the day, all artists are sensitive people. You know, we all have to process what comes in. And a lot of us get into a space where we curate what's coming into our sphere and into our environment in order to protect that kind of, that, you know, soft, that that kind of, I, I don't want to say vulnerability, but you know what I mean? We have a... Yeah. Or you can say vulnerability. A, I think that's there, very, very... There is a sensitivity within an artist that I think they absorb things so intensely that they have to somehow process. I think some of this bigger should work is my processing, you know? Yes, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I think uh, as an art, from, from a painter's point of view, your your studio practice absolutely is your way of making sense of your, of the world. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I would tend to agree with that. I really so would, yeah. What? And what, what a lovely outlet. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Makes me much nicer yes. person to be around. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, 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 it's so rewarding and at the same time so terrifying because really you're wearing your, 
your heart on your sleeve. And I find that with painting too. When you, you know, when, in, when you're involved in your studio practice, it's a very insular process. It's very highly emotional and very, uh, very real for you. But then you have to take that and, and share it with the public or make the choice to share it with the public. So it, it kind of frightens me sometimes because I think, oh my God, are they going to see what I... Writing, but it's not a literal graphic text type writing. It can be scribbles, it can be scratches, it can be marks, it can be colour, it can be, you know. Um, yeah. But it's about the energies that's put into it and that it does have meaning, but that it will be interpreted again by the reader or very privately kept for the person who wrote it, yeah. you know. I mean, if you think of... If you think of writing your name, Brendan, with in write your name in script, you know, in cursive, you know, remember the way the nuns used to beat you into learning how to reduce yeah. sign, signed writing, write in cursive, write your name and address, put no breaks between it. Don't dot your eyes. Don't cross your T's and then turn the page upside down. Do it. Do it again. Do it. Do it. So, so yeah. let me just grab something. Yeah, name no, and address here. Right. Yeah. Turn it, do it that way, turn it, do it that way, turn it, do it that way, and continue till you've filled in the square. And in essence, you've created a, a, a body or a, a, an energy of a semic. You know, the, there's intent in it, and quite often it's not literal, quite often it isn't text, but the simplest kind of introduction into it is to do something very simple like that. And I journal that way. So even right. though I have loads and loads and loads of journals, nobody else could read them. Quite often I can't read them, but right. whatever energy and whatever whatever emotion and processing has gone into that. Yeah, so it's not really about the, yeah. it's not really about the bearing, you, you read it in an emotional way rather than a literal way, really. Yeah, I think you it's feel like, it's almost, I think it's like it's all good like, art, it makes yeah, exactly. you feel something. Exactly, it's, it's almost yeah. like when yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you know, people that have very gestural or expressive signatures, you, yeah. more often than not, you, can, you, you unless you know the person or unless you know the actual signature, you couldn't discern the, that those that person's name from the signature. But yet yeah. it's, it's an emotional expression of the type of character they are. I have one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever signed my signature where it could be held up in court to say that's definitively her signature. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, you know, I think GPs struggle to read my writing, but it is. It's, it's interesting. There's so much of yourself that you put out into the world through your mark and, and it all comes back into my work. You know, yeah. well, absolutely. And that's what I uh, the, the, the combination of these two shows together, are both Rosemary's and yeah. yourselves. They're, they're in a way, they're very different works. Uh, in their interpretation of, of, of reality, you know, in inverted commas, so to speak, or how, how, how you express yourselves as artists. But yet the, the process is almost very similar in that way that it's, uh, it's abstracted realism. So it becomes an emotional conversation between the, the artist or the interpretation and the viewer rather than something literal. Um, which yeah. is a very not only much more broad but in a way one could almost say a deeper conversation I can't remember who said it but I know it was quoted that somebody said in a piece of art you know this question of when's a piece of art finished or how do you know it's completed and somebody actually said that it's only completed when it's been viewed because the viewing is part of the process the viewing yes. completes the piece because it's the interpretation by the viewer of what's in front of them and what it makes them feel. It is a conversation. Well, that's so it. So yeah, I wish I could remember who said that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, when, when I, I mean, I went to art college myself and I, yeah. one thing that, 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 that they, the tutors kept over saying over and over and over again, really, is that it's about the dialogue, really. It's, it's, I mean, the process for yourself is the important aspect of you creating the work, you know? Yeah. But really and that's what keeps like, bringing you back. Yeah, because when so you take it into the public, yeah, yeah, when you take it into the public sphere and share it with people, then it becomes about the dialogue, really. And yeah. just as you said, the work is the interpretation or the meaning of it or the value of it is uh, is is furthered or broadened out by that dialogue. Uh, exactly. In other words, if there was nobody, if there was nobody to add to that, if it wasn't shown, then it would be incomplete.
I have an awful lot of work that's never been shown. I don't consider it incomplete, but it, there is argument for that. And there, it is it is that conversation. And I think when people fall in love with the piece, it's they're falling in love with what they see that they want to see and that's feeding back to them. And yeah. it becomes very personal, you know. Does, um, yeah. they're, they're falling in love with what they what they see for themselves. It's not really yes. what your intention was. But that's the yeah. interesting thing about abstract art. Well, about all kind of art, but particularly abstract, I think, mm. too, because it's um, it's very uh, universal. The message, the 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 emotional dialogue is very universal, really, because yeah, we, like it's I said, feeling in color, the, isn't it really? Yeah, exactly. It's we can all relate to that. We can all re- we we all relate to the same things. Ultimately, ultimately, we all want the same thing, yeah. and we somewhat have a tendency to fool ourselves into thinking mm. that we're isolated from everybody else, but we're not really, because we're all the same. We always uh, have more in common than we have that separates yes. us. Yeah. Always. And yeah. that's what's been yeah, un- yeah. interesting about lockdown, hasn't it? It's made us, it's helped us to focus on those kind of things, really, where otherwise we'd be running around like headless chickens, I think there's know. been two approaches to lockdown. Mass panic hysteria toilet paper buying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. <gasps> or pause, take stock, and actually take that time to appreciate where you are and, and, and really take gratitude in the small things. Because as a society, we've just come so far away from ourselves in in the rat race, in the in the in the kind of the materialistic and the want and the busyness and this business of being busy all the time. That I think, I think it's been very very good for some people and incredibly hard for others. Yeah. And that's notwithstanding, I know people have had horrible experiences oh, with COVID. Okay, yeah. But um, excluding that, I mean, your general, regular, safe locked down public that haven't had to experience that and go through that trauma. I, I, I think, I think most of us have found that on, on, for the most part, we're content, and we're more content than we thought we'd be, in a very, very, very strange circumstance. Yeah, you know, absolutely, it's all, yeah, uh, and we're blessed for it. It's always extreme circumstances make you value what you really have. Listen, we really don't have that much more time left. Um, yeah. So do you want to take a few questions from people? Sure. Maybe Fire so? away. I see a few friendly faces. Harry. You know, um, can we just, I'll bring up, can I, if I click on the chat box, will it go up, Gail? Yeah, I, yeah, I just, I'm not sure if there were, I didn't see any um, questions. I saw comments coming in. I didn't see any questions, but... I, I had a lot of things to distract me here tonight. Okay. I was failing on my duties to look at the look at the questions, but uh, just while we're trying to get those, can are you seeing questions, Brenda? Or are you seeing any questions? No, I'm just seeing. I just have uh, Neve's work here. Oh, I have. Um, wait now for a minute. I have. Um, uh rosemary langtry says to everyone good luck neve and rose i agree all uh i agree all rose i agree all rosemary's are very shy <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, congratulations she's congratulating gabrielle then on her exhibition in Ballyland. i saw it a few weeks ago uh what was the name of the x technology it was kun what was it kun Kunst Matrix. You Kunst can actually Matrix. see it think, on the top of it. Kunst is the German for art. So K-U, as in K U N S T. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kunst Matrix. Yeah. So, uh, love your work, Neve. From Orla Barry to everyone, Neve. Do you oh, usually yes. work on such a large scale, or is that new? That's new. <laughs> And that's been really exciting. I just thought at the beginning I would, I always, you know, I always felt I'd like to work larger and changing out away from the encaustic. And that's not to say that I'll never go back to encaustic, you know, but, you know, Mm. just to have that freedom of expression to work larger. Now, I don't have an enormous studio. What you see behind me is pretty much it with a bookshelf in front of me. I'm actually sitting very glamorously beside the studio bin here. So, you know, it's not huge. <laughs> but um, like a metre by metre is kind of the biggest piece that I'm doing at the moment. And mm. I've really enjoyed it. But that's definitely new. But I'm still doing smaller works on paper. And the... 
I think I think the work is a little bit more expressive and out there and a bit mad on the larger scale and the smaller works tend to be more abstracted nature and landscapes a lot of kind of riverbed walks and things that we were doing when we were in our 5k and and that's something that's coming back and coming back and coming back and I wouldn't have traditionally worked in landscape so I'm quite intrigued by that but that seems to be that seems to come quite naturally in the smaller work where the larger work is a bit more gestural, you know? Yeah, it's much easier uh, to, to be more gestural with paint rather than acoustic anyway, isn't it? It tends to be more... Uh, yeah. uh, do you know what? Encaustic is a fantastic medium and I always say it's the ultimate medium because you can do everything with it. And yeah. I would never run it down. It's still my first love. But I yeah. think... I Although think I love as, it, I Yeah, yeah. and I for, think for, for very me, large works, it's uh, you have to be a bit, a bit more careful i think rather than with paint yeah well it's such an expensive medium and you can get it wrong and there's an awful lot of chemistry involved and you're you're you know you're setting it alight or you're you're burning it with blow torches it's a hugely laborious process from that regard now i love process yeah. um but I just felt freer, you know, I just felt I wanted that freedom to experiment back with paint. So it's lovely. It's a, it's a nice, it's nice to come back to yeah. it. And of course, when you talk about encaustic there, you're talking about the hot, hot wax method. You're not talking about I'm cold. talking about hot wax method. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. kind of, well, I always differentiate it between European encaustic, which is with the irons and the little kits. And I actually do classes in that. And they're very popular um, compared to what I would refer to as the American style, which is like after Jasper Johns and it's layering with molten wax you know you're heating huge vats of molten wax self-coloring layering and then fusing again with low torches heat oh. guns whatever so it's you know yeah, yeah. yeah. i just oh. I, I did a lot of cold wax uh, in in college myself it's very different so i just have another uh, you know, what, what were you going to say neve i just was going to ask another question yeah we, we just we, we we've two minutes left so we keep it down to maybe just a minute okay. and, and, and then we wind up if that's okay just to question and a quick answer if that's possible because we're gonna run okay, yeah. helen farrell wants to know do you work do you work mostly every day helen i'll be honest with you now <laughs> i have i have a young family and oh. um and a very oh, a very it's a very attention seeking puppy and uh and a lot of housework <laughs> but um my head is in it all the time my head is in it all the time. And I have to say that during the, the bulk of lockdown, I did work every day. And I was, I had that respite. I had that space to do it because my husband was home. So he was able to pick up the slack and look after the boys. And I wasn't trying to squeeze it in between school runs and bits and bobs. And that's been very freeing because I've, I've kind of been able to continue. You know, you get into that kind of space and you want to continue on with that. And so often as women, it's broken. You don't get a long run at that. So that's been rather fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Great. So Good look. We're, we're unfortunately we're here, and I have a, a countdown in front of me, and we've we've just been so yeah. old, so less than one minute. Less than one minute. We'll so, on, we're just about to disappear. Unfortunately. Congratulations, Nate. Um, thank you, darling. And thank and can I just say thank you to Leach Kent Council for supporting Solace and supporting us. And to be able to do yeah. this at such short notice, because up to last week we were having a physical show, Rosemary and I. And um, I'm sorry not to do that with Rosemary because I really do like her work. She's wonderful. Um and I hope it's okay to speak for both of us, Rosemary, when I said, we're chuffed with yous. We're just oh, chuffed with yous. This is wonderful. We're, we're literally thank you. Going to be, we're literally going to be cut off now. So thanks okay. so much for joining us. Congratulations, guys. Thanks, Nate.